Hey guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And on this podcast, I wanted to talk to you guys about how the narcissist does not like being alone. Narcissists, you guys, they don't like being alone. This is why they needed you. This is why they need you. This is why they need the new supply. Um, This is why it doesn't really matter who the narcissist is with because the simple fact is they don't like being alone. One thing about narcissists is that even if they are quiet, right, they might tell you, you know, I'm a quiet person. I don't have a lot of friends or I don't really, you know, like large crowds or I like to keep to myself. I I know how to be alone. I know how to, I've mastered it. I've mastered how to be alone. You know, these these are the same people that will tell you that they don't have a problem being alone, yet you've never seen them alone. And you're looking at them like, how could you tell me about being alone and being strong when I've had to be alone, when I've been discarded? I've had to be strong, you know, when no one supported me or... Um, you know, no one was there for me at all, you know, so you're thinking to yourself, these people have turned on me, they've lied on me, they've made up stories, they've gaslighted me, made me feel like I was crazy, like I wasn't seeing and hearing what I was seeing and hearing, right? Um, Literally just trying to knock my senses off, all because they're telling me that, you know, they're they know how to be alone. They have so much confidence in them, right? In themselves, right? And they're looking at you like, well, why can't you learn how to be alone? Like I've learned to be alone. Like I've, I've been alone before. And after that point of my life of being alone, I decided that I will never be alone again, but I know how to be alone. So the narcissist has it in their mind that they've been alone before, they've mastered it, they know what it feels like when, you know, um, the supply, any of their supplies don't want them back. They, They feel like, I've been, you know, left behind, I know what it feels like, and they'll do it to you. You know, the narcissist, they will do it to you. They'll put you in, in a situation where you literally, um, you know, put your trust in this narcissist, they betray you. And now the people closest to you might not trust you anymore because, you know, they felt like you put more trust into the narcissist than them, right? Um, You know, they might not like the narcissist, they might not see something in the narcissist. But um, what they will do is that they will put you in situations just that you don't have anyone and you'll look to even family and you'll tell them like, I'm really hurt. You know, no one treats me like family. So a lot of times, even with family, it's like, you'll be sad about it. And then you, you become a a bit angry. You know, you become a bit angry because you're alone and these people, you know, are supposed to be family and everyone's just moving on. Um, not including you in, not, welcoming you when you come around you can feel everyone their spirit like they like they're waiting to talk about you like they talk about you behind your back they talk to they talk about you while they're on the phone you know they talk about you all the time so when you come around you feel that energy that's like we were talking about you we talk about you when you're not here what are you doing here what are you doing here But you're thinking to yourself, like, I didn't really do anything to offend anyone. Someone has made up a lie about me and made it bigger than what it is and even lied. And every time I try to confront them about it, they act like they don't know or they play the victim or they're kind of like they apologize, move on. So they want to act apologetic. But then again, they want to talk about you behind your back. And when you come around everyone, that, that energy is like... What what are you doing here? Right? To the point where you're not going to want to come around those people. You know, the narcissist, they will treat you so bad, you know. Um, and a lot of times the narcissist, they're already, you know, you're already walking on eggshells with them. And next thing you know, you know, 
they're treating you with such disrespect to a whole nother level that you're forced to leave these people. You're forced to leave them. And you think to yourself, I need to leave because this is abusive. You know, um, what's the point of surrounding myself with people that I'm supposed to be close to? But it seems like everyone is just looking for a reason to talk you know, maybe about me or someone that I'm close to or me just being around these people, knowing that they gossip about other people all day long. It's draining to me. And if I say if I call narcissism out, if I if I if I bring any awareness to anything they're doing, everyone is staring at me like I'm like I'm a different spirit in the room. And because they're Christians, they're looking at you like you're the bad spirit. But in actuality, they're the ones that are speaking ill and you're just calling them out and they feel offended. They feel like, how dare you? If you weren't here, we would be able to gossip and we wouldn't feel bad about gossiping and talking bad about others and plotting on them. We wouldn't feel bad. So when you put yourself in a position where you're alone all the time because you're sensitive to this type of energy you know it can become depressing it could become lonely especially if you're in the worst you know scenario like you know I thank God you know where I'm at right now because it was times where I was like I don't know how I'm going to get out of this one like dang I really don't have anyone to help me dang I can't just call like my parents to help me and like everything became surreal and as it became like this can't be real you know um it seemed like things just kept getting worse and the narcissist in my life they were just watching they were just watching they'll have their input or sometimes they will judge the situation and make me feel even worse about it they would make me feel like i didn't have anyone and you know thank god that I always was a hustler and I always I've never been shy and I've always, you know, been able to figure out what to do, you know, to stay balanced, to be able to survive. I've always, you know, no matter how things how bad it got and, you know, just to know that I made it through those situations and I was even in those situations in the first place because of that narcissist because of their energy it's just the energy that they're giving you right it's just the energy they're giving you they're giving you desperation they're giving you anxiety you have anxiety you have all of these things that are coming out of from them their anger all that stuff starts rubbing off on you you go from looking at the narcissist like why are you acting like that why are you being like that too you're not even scared because you know what they're who they are to other people they would be freaked out this is why the narcissist has to change their character and when you're looking up to this narcissist you know um during hard times they're just watching and on top of that they're doing things behind your back and then they're bringing extra baggage you already, you know, are getting anxiety and all these things from them. Now they're bringing extra baggage. Now, if you if you feel like, oh, I'm overloaded with information, with energy from this person, this person's energy feels dark and heavy on my shoulders and you feel really disgusted, you know, and um, the narcissist, they know that it's them the whole time and they're playing dumb. They're just like look, I came from a place where I'm destined to be alone. I've been alone. So you should know, you should know, um, you know, you should know that I'm okay with being alone. I'm okay with it. But I, I but I refuse to ever go to that place again. I refuse to to um, I refuse to accept what I'm destined to accept. So the narcissist will be cursed because now they're going to feel lonely in their brain and they're going to be surrounded by people. So they're surrounded by people and they are still, you know, suffering that torment while they're with people. This is why you'll see them have nightmares and they're always flipping out, always messing with people. The narcissist feels like... Um, I refuse to. I rather, I rather use uh, people. 
I'd rather use people than be back by myself, you know, but I know how to be by myself. Good luck to you. Looks like I left you in hell where I'm supposed to be, you know, and you're thinking narcissist, you know, how could you do this to me? Like, um, you said you don't like being alone. So why are you guys crucifying me? Why are you putting me in a position where I'm alone now? And it becomes unbearable at first until you get used to it. And then when you get used to it and you get a clear mind, you, you'll get angry, you'll get sad, you'll get depressed, you'll want to die, you'll think about everybody and what they did to you, you'll think about revenge, you'll think about karma, you'll think about all of these things while you're in that place by yourself. It's like a hell. Seriously, it's like a hell. And um, eventually... You learn to accept. And when you learn to accept, you learn that the narcissist does not really like being by themselves the way they tried to make you believe. Just because they were a quiet person didn't mean they like being by themselves. They were they might have been quiet around you or others, but they needed to at least be sitting in the room with them. They at least needed to be in their presence. They might not like those people, but they'll still go around them because they don't want to be alone. They know that's a place that's very dark. They know that if they go there, they might never get out. This is why they use you. This is why they use anyone. So when you're in that situation, you have to really look at it like that person literally dragged you there and moved on because they they always had someone else on the burner you know on the side waiting on on the back burner waiting for them you know wanting to play your position you know they they always had that person there because they were afraid to be alone they were afraid to be alone they were afraid if you figured figured them out you were eventually going to leave them they 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 hate giving you a sense of control because they feel like, hey, if I give you too much control, you might say you love me right now, but tomorrow you might kick me out of your house because you're mad at me because you caught me cheating. Tomorrow you might kick me out of your house because I snuck someone in your house. So to them, it's only about supply. They don't want to go back to that dark place. So it's about supply. They can't stop doing what they're doing. They can't stop being a narcissist. So to them, it's like, well, I'll just, you know, learn from you and take it to the next relationship and learn from that relationship and take it to the next one because I cannot stop getting supplies because if I do, eventually I'm going to end up in that dark place. So to them, it's like I'm climbing up the stairs, but if I look down, I'm going to fall. You know, and when I realized that, I realized that when the narcissist did take me in that dark place and when they finally, you know, hoovered me and I was vulnerable and I took them back because I felt like I don't have anything. I don't have anyone. Right. And I took them back. And um, I remember when they were on their process, on the process to discard me again, it didn't really take them that long. And I realized in that moment oh, he never left the other person that he left me for in the first place. Oh, you know, he's back because something's going on over there. Maybe he got caught cheating. Maybe she found his phone and saw my messages. You know, I'm going through all of these different scenarios because I know it can be true based on this person's personality. And because they know that I know them and I'm figuring them out and how they work, and I'm asking the, the questions that I know are important. And they're looking at me like, oh, you're psychic. You know everything I'm going to do and why I'm doing it. They start looking at you like, oh, she knows. But she's still dumb because she allowed me back in. You know, and you take them back and guess what? They leave you in that dark place. And you're sitting there telling them like, I don't want to be in this dark place. It's dark. You know, this is before you wake up, before you have healed and understand, you know, as long as you keep taking the narcissist back, you're still sleeping, basically. And it doesn't seem like that because you have information. You know, it's kind of like being in a haunted house and people are like, don't go outside. There's a killer on the loose. And you're like, I don't see the killer. And we're like, 
you know, there's all of these signs. We keep getting calls, you know, someone's threatening us, you know, wake up. And um, that person still goes, even though they know they shouldn't go, they shouldn't look back, they still go, you know. So when I realized that, um, that I was still sleeping, even with waking up slowly, because I didn't know anything about this type of information um, at the time, you know, Um, and then when I did stumble upon it, because I literally was like, something's weird, something is off, you know, Um, and psycho basically came up on the internet. And after that, um, I just kept doing more and more research. And it was like, I was discovering what the devil was to me. That's how I looked at it. And even then, I still didn't want to believe it. So I kept testing the situation, kept doing things um, and and kept evaluating everything. And I was like, yeah, everything is it, it keeps going exactly how it's supposed to go. Hoover, discard, triangulation. Everything is going exactly the same patterns in different ways and different patterns. Right. Because the narcissist, sometimes they don't want to keep doing the same pattern. They want to switch it up. So, you know, they you know, it all resolves, everything revolves around the narcissist at the end of the day in their world. And it's not until you pull yourself out of their world, even as hurtful as it is, um, that you will eventually see the relationship for, you know, who they are. And that's someone that does not want to be alone. That's all it is that's all it's about with the narcissist. So this is why you'll see narcissists with, you know, supplies that you might think are not attractive. You might be like, why did this person leave me for this person? Like, what the hell? Why are they even sending me pictures of this person? Like, they don't even compare to me. This is crazy. That's because to them, they just need someone supply night. It's like a slap in the face. They're basically saying, see, I don't care about anyone. I could be alone like you, but I'd rather just go from supply to supply so that I don't have to be alone. What's the point of being alone when you could be getting things out of people? And it's there and, and these people that I go after, they don't want to be alone, so I'm doing them a favor. I'm doing them a favor. They don't want to look within. The narcissist feels like I've already looked within and I've made a a conscience choice that this is what I'm about and this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to die by this. This is who I am. I've decided, you know, there's no looking back anymore, no matter what, you know, to them, it's like. I don't care about giving people, you know, I don't care about giving people chances and really getting to know them. And I don't care about love. I don't care about love the way you guys think. Even when when you ask me that question, every time I need to say I love you, it's cringing. Even though it sounds natural within that energy feels cringing to me because I don't really know what love is. But I know it's something that you should just say to people to make them feel good. To them, it's like, yeah, I love you. I I need you. Yeah, you're right. I need you. So in their mind, they're thinking, yeah, I need you. I need you. I need you. You know, so these people will tell you they don't need anyone, but they definitely need you, you know, or else they wouldn't hoover you just to get to the next source. They need you. It's a source of supply. It's energy to them. It fuels them. Just having a conversation with you fuels them. Contact with them fuels them. They won't give you closure, but they'll expect closure because they need the fuel. You know, why would you not give someone closure and then expect to expect them to give you closure later on? Because you're you're sitting here playing games, trying to torture someone. And then you're coming back like, OK, I'm starting to feel bad now. Um, give me closure you know, because, uh, I, I, you know, you should be over it by now. Now we can both clean ourselves and move it along, you know, let's clean the energy, you know, and, you know, I realized that when that narcissist literally told me, you know, that I basically didn't have anyone. They're like, you don't love me. You just don't have anyone. And, it really hit me when he said that um, because I loved him throughout all of those years and through 
me losing the people closest to me because I was putting my all into him. I was basically making this person my God because, you know, I should have been putting myself first. So to me, I realized the the way that I fell for the whole con, the whole scam, um, just the whole, you know, narcissistic dynamic, whatever you want to call it. The reason I fell for it is because eventually they did have the control over me because I didn't have anyone. And there was some type of um, attachment or I felt like when things weren't going right or it seemed like when they tried to, it seemed like everything would be going perfect. And then it seemed like when they would try to hoover me, things would start going bad in my life. And it seemed like because it went bad, I would take them back. Like, you know, because I would think to myself like, oh, things are going bad. Now, having a clear mind, I realized that just by them hoovering me and having thoughts of me and um, it's like they're sending me bad energy, you know. And if I start questioning myself, if I start looking back or I start looking down, Um, Even if I'm not planning on going back, just by looking back, this means just by responding to them, bad things happen just by responding to them. And then you'll be sucked into taking them back because you feel like bad things are happening to me. But that's all a test. That's all a test to see if you can really stand alone. Let's see if you can really stand alone. That's what the narcissist doesn't want you to understand, that you have power, just you yourself. They want to deplete you of your energy so that you can be like them and be, you know, soul sucking people. They want you to be soul suckers like them. Every time the narcissist opens their mouth, they're lying. They want you to be constant liars. They want you to be fake like them, you know, so. Being alone and being away from these people and seeing them for who they are, it definitely makes you a lot stronger and it takes it takes a long time to get there. So when you finally get there, there's going to be people that attack you all the time. That's another challenge. Because now all of these narcissists are attacking you, even though they they're the ones who, you know, um, left you alone and, and, and now they're attacking you and you're thinking to yourself, None of you can be alone. You guys claim that you could be alone, but none of you guys can be alone like me and, 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 you know, and stand, you know, another day and and keep fighting to live another day. You know, none of you guys can do this. You know, I want to see you guys try. You guys are, are messing with me. And, um, that's like another thing. It's like now you have to concentrate on knowing who you are, what you learned, that time you took alone, you have to put all those things into action. And it's crazy because you'll have strangers questioning who you are and you're still trying to be strong. You know, um, people, people look at you like you're a strong person, but it's not like you can't, you don't have feelings anymore just because you're a good person. So people will take advantage of you being nice or good or, you know, um, try to pass judgment on you. Um, when you're handling this battle on your own. So you have to be kind to people because there's empaths that have been through it and they're on their own. They don't have people to turn to. They're in this war uh, on their own. They've realized that they're on their own and they're okay with it. But um, it's crazy when you try to help others understand And they're just being fake because they still are holding on to narcissists in their life. So to them, it's like they have the same information, but they haven't fully woken up because if they did, they would see the disrespect that the narcissist causing in their life. So because they're in that torment still, they'll pass judgment on you. They'll assume things about you. They'll assume you're a narcissist because they're still surrounding themselves with narcissists. So, um... Being alone is a blessing. You know, like I said, the narcissist, you know, sat there and told me basically, you know, hey, you you just don't want to be you you don't love me. You just don't want to be alone. And, 
you know, I realized, no, I'm strong enough to be alone. It's you guys that don't like being alone. You know, that's that's the difference between you and I. You need it to survive and I don't. And because you have an addiction, you're trying to um, make it seem like I don't see through your addiction, through your hunger, your energy hunger. I see your energy hunger. And, you know, even with family, you know, you'll have people in your family that are Christians and they'll tell you, put your faith in God. You know, don't put your faith in human beings. Don't be, you know, just go to church. You know, they won't even invite you to their church. They don't even want to take you to their church. They don't want you telling people about what's going on in your family. They're just like, stay away from the family. You don't need us. Pray to God. And you've done nothing to these people. They've made up lies about you. Anything that you've done, it's out of reaction to the abuse. Because you finally realize it's abuse and you can't take it. Abuse, you don't just get abused. Someone doesn't just say something hurtful and then you, you're you looking at them like a monster. This is a, a pattern that happens over time. And when you start to see that it's the same pattern happening, you realize this is abuse, you know, and these people don't want to be alone. They, they stick together like glue, you know, and, 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 you know, they, they make fun of you for being alone. They make fun of you for standing strong on your own, you know, um, and, and, you know, they're hoping that they can just keep coming back to use you because they left you in that place of being alone. You know, the narcissist is like, I've mastered how not to be alone. This is why, you know, they'll discard you and months, years later, when things aren't going right with their new supply, they'll come in desperation like they've had this epiphany that you're their soulmate and the love of their life. And it's all fake and lies. They don't want to be alone. The narcissist claims that they could be alone. They like to be alone. But in actuality, they, you know, they're just that, you know, they're just being real quiet. They think they think being alone means being quiet around someone. Being quiet when you're at home, and you're surrounded by people that's not being alone that's like that's like you know that's like having a roommate or or having family in your home you have family brothers sisters your parents and you're like I'm alone I know I'm in my room and everyone's here but I'm alone that's not alone you still have you might be by yourself but there's still people there you still have people around, whether they're good people, bad people, they're still there. So the narcissist, you know, they they'll be around people they don't like and they'll feel like I'm alone. This is why I need to go, you know, and chase supply and, and, and be around people. Um, they constantly need to be around someone, even if they're quiet. So just like being in a, in a home that's empty and no one's there, you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to be alone. You know, you invite one of your friends and you're like, you know, come spend the night. You know, you don't really, you know, you just want, you don't want to be in the house by yourself. You know, it's not that I, you need your friend. It's not that you need her. You just don't want to be in the house by yourself. That's how the narcissist looks at things. I just don't want to be by myself. I don't I'm not attracted to this person, but I just don't want to be by myself. To them, it's like, what's the point? You know, to them, it's like, I'd rather be alone, but have someone around. So it doesn't matter how much time you give the narcissist, they will always feel like they're alone. So while you're suffering by yourself, and you're really alone, there's no one home. The narcissist is like, I'm lonely, but I have people around me. I treat people bad. You know, I chase after people that don't care about me. And I treat the people that care about me like they're dumb or they don't understand what I'm going through. The people closest to me, I hate them. You know, no respect there for them. Um, and they've taken you away from everything you've known. And you might really be alone. 
but they're still around those people, you know? So don't ever listen to when a narcissist puts you in a position where you're so lonely um, because a lot of times they're not alone. They're not as lonely as they think. A lot of times the people they talk bad about, those people will still come through for them. So they'll put you in a position where you don't, you completely have no one. And, you know, they'll act like you're weak and they'll bully you. They'll bully you even more. So if you're in a position where you're alone, do not allow these people back in your life because all they're doing is coming back to harass you, to bully you, to pretend to be your friend to backstab you again and to leave you in that hell so that they can use you whenever they get to another supply. You know, this is why they go from supply to supply and they never, um, they never stop the cycle of abuse. So, um, I just wanted to drop this message to you guys about, you know, narcissists and, you know, how they act like, you know, they, they're better off alone or they don't like people, but in actuality, you know, they always need someone. Even if they're quiet, they need someone and they're not quiet all the time. You'll see that, you know, they'll bring out that personality, that person who they really are. They'll bring it out a lot. You know, they're looking for someone to put up with them. So, you know, don't put up with that type of energy in your life because it will only destroy you mentally, physically, and spiritually. So I hope this message, you guys, this podcast was helpful for your healing, um, your understanding. And I'm sending you guys lots of love, lots of light, and lots of peace. If you guys are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe, like, share this video if you guys care. And I will talk to you guys on the next podcast. I love you guys. Bye.